My friends, the um, bell tower at UOP is just donging that it is noon right now and it's Wednesday and I'm really happy to be able to talk with you again. Um, I did not have a pastoral message last week because Jan and I were on vacation and that was a much needed break and change of scenery for us. So I am very, very proud of both Robbie Fredrickson and Rylan Fernandez who preached on the 17th and Ryan on the 24th. Um, it's wonderful to hear younger voices and to know that we are helping as a congregation to nurture uh, leaders in the church. They are already leaders and I suspect that the church will continue to benefit from their leadership for many years to come. So I am very grateful to them um, for their care and for their their work and their inspiration. It was really inspirational to watch those services for me. I know there's been a lot in the press and a lot of conversation and questions about when will we return to in-person worship? And um, the answer is, I don't know yet. And the reason I don't know yet is number one, our bishop has made it very clear that our churches are not to conduct worship in our sanctuaries uh, before May 31st, which of course is this coming Sunday. In other words, we cannot be in the sanctuary um, until June in the earliest, but the, uh, the guidelines and the protocols for what it will take for us to safely gather for worship in our sanctuary are quite extensive, and we are not yet prepared to do that. We uh, according to the current guidelines from the state, we can have a maximum of 100 people in our worship space wearing masks. Um, we cannot share hymnals. I'm not sure that we would be able to sing. And we would have to have um, a number of kinds of equipment available that we have ordered, like hand sanitizer dispensers and masks for those people who may come and have forgotten their mask and so forth. But there is a lot that we need to do before it will be safe for our community, particularly for the vulnerable members of our community, to gather inside for in-person worship. Um, there are also some protocols for drive-through worship, which are also uh, so daunting that in my judgment, um, this would not be a good option for us. The current protocols from our annual conference require that uh, windows be closed, that anyone who needs to use the restroom would, would have to leave the property to do so. Um, and it, you know, with the kind of heat we have in Stockton, I, I don't relish the idea of um, cars you know, idling and, and spewing carbon pollution into the parking lot. Um, so I think right now our online worship continues to be the better option. I, I suspect what will happen is we will find ways for smaller groups of people to gather, perhaps outside in Central Park, for instance, um, during a morning or during an evening, perhaps for a, a physically distanced potluck or other gathering. And we are talking about ways we can do that. Um, there certainly have been people, volunteers on our church property, helping us to care for the grounds and uh, taking care of some, some other projects inside the building. Um, and certainly we've had success with some fun drive-through options. The birthday party for Jan R for her 70th birthday was such great fun and we so enjoyed seeing the people who came and she was very surprised. Um, we've had the drive-by drop off the recycling without contact. We've had the drive-by and drop off food. And this Saturday we are going to have a procession of central people in our cars, maybe with some decorations, blowing our horns to go visit the three high school graduates who are graduating um, 
this spring from high school to really tell them how much we are proud of them and how much we care for them, even though their senior, their last semester has been quite disrupted. So there are lots of ways that we are gathering. Um, our Zoom Bible studies have been going well and we are conducting business via Zoom as we need to. So much is happening. Um, the, the church is not closed. We just are not at this moment prepared to gather in any numbers in our buildings. And as soon as I have more information, I will let you know. Well, that was my phone, which sounds like a barking dog, as I think you realize, so I have now uh, put it on vibrate. <laughs> Sorry for that interruption. Um, so as soon as, as I have information about how we can safely gather again for worship, um, we, will, we will move forward with that. I will say that we will continue some kind of online worship experience moving forward because it is clear that that option is meeting a need for many people who for a variety of reasons are not able to come to church at the appointed worship hours. So you can expect that, that this will continue. Um, we may live stream our worship once we are able to be back in our worship space. I, we haven't yet figured that out, but, but we're working on it. Um, you also might notice if you're by the church or um, I'll just tell you about it, that uh, the trustees in concert with the Columbarium Committee have approved some work that has that is already happening. We have removed the fountain from the columbarium area. It was broken, it was leaking water, and it was um, proving very difficult and expensive to try and maintain. So the fountain is gone and there will be some lovely new plantings in that area. Isabel Cuerpo also has a great plan for what we're going to call the central garden which is in that area where we had to take out two large trees just outside the columbarium. We are going to remove all the grass from that area and um, it will be ultimately in the fall, we will be planting that with some drought resistant native plants and the garden will be an educational place for the children of the nursery school and also for our own children and youth and adults as we learn more about how to grow beautiful plants that don't require a lot of water in our state. So there's lots happening at the church, um, outside and inside. And most importantly, there is lots happening as we connect with each other. So please know that if you have a need for pastoral care or prayer, um, a listening ear, your team is available to you. We are spending lots of time on the phone and uh, on Zoom, and we continue to be in ministry together. So God bless you. Please come to worship on Pentecost Sunday. Wear red if you can. Red is the color for Pentecost, and I look forward to seeing you soon.